From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Thursday, July 21st. Well, happening this morning, members of the St. Xavier family will be laid to rest, identified as victims in last week's pile up out on Interstate 90. Georgia Walks, Shiley Walks, 11 year old Vichelle Walks, and three year old Merrick Champ were all riding in the same vehicle when they were caught in that dust storm. Chad Fox, also from St. Xavier, and 60 year old Eric Love of Bozeman lost their lives in the crash as well. Michelle Walks was going to be a sixth grader this fall at Pretty Eagle Catholic Academy. Now, all of her classmates are honorary pallbearers at her funeral this morning in Crow Agency. School leaders are planning a separate memorial service when classes start again in a spirit garden in the school's courtyard. Pretty Eagle staff tell us Michelle, her grandma Georgia, and Auntie Shiley were all a tight knit group. A service for all three is scheduled for 10 a.m. Michelle was one of the kindest people I've ever come across. I mean, even, even on her bad days, she was still trying to bring somebody else up. A funeral service for three-year-old Merrick Champ is scheduled for tomorrow. And now it is time to get a quick check of that weather with you, Miller. Morning. Good yep. morning on this Thursday. Yeah, buddy. You ready to take a dip in the pool? Uh, I think I am. Ooh, yes, I know a lot, yeah. of, a lot of folks are probably doing it yesterday as we got hot. Going to be hot today and tomorrow as well. Yeah. So definitely want to take advantage of a pool if you've got it. Uh, but we do have some changes in the forecast as we get into the weekend. I'll tell you about that coming up here in just a bit. 62 right now at the airport. Winds out of the southwest at about 5 miles an hour. Take a look at uh, quickly some temperatures across the area. 65 in Coal Strip. Crow Agency at 58, uh, down in Sheridan at 55, up in uh, Broadview at 62, Columbus at 58, Reed Point 56, Gardner at 52 right now. So you're going to see a lot of 90s again across the board today, even hotter, mid to upper 90s in some spots. Going to hold on to those temperatures tomorrow and then a cool down for the weekend and maybe some rain. So we'll break it all down with the main forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, it'll be pretty hot out there today, so definitely sure consider the pool. Yep. Okay, thank you, Miller. A judge is ordering Rudy Giuliani to testify in front of a grand jury investigating possible interference in the 2020 election in Georgia. Giuliani must also appear on any other dates needed by the court. The grand jury is investigating whether former President Trump and others illegally tried to change election results. Giuliani could file a motion to try to avoid having to appear. Other witnesses have already filed challenges to their subpoenas. The dangerous heat covering much of the country continues. Millions of Americans are under excessive heat warnings and advisories. Some cities in the Northeast may see triple digit temperatures this week for the first time in over a decade. In North Texas, the heat and dry lands are fueling a number of wildfires. In response to that heat wave, President Biden, he is laying out new executive actions. For the first time, states will be able to use federal funds to pay for air conditioners in homes and set up community cooling centers in schools where people can get through an extreme heat crisis. So far, though, the president is stopping just short of declaring a national emergency on climate change, but says that is still up for consideration. It is a somber anniversary. One year ago, the body of lame deer's Deanna Limberhand was pulled from the Yellowstone River. 365 days later, her family says they still have more questions than answers about who exactly is responsible for the 39-year-old's death. Q2's Alina Howder reports. It's been one long, hard year for all of us. Darlene Limberhand has been dreaming of justice for her daughter Deanna since the day she vanished. I talked to her the day before and she, she, she just told me I'm coming home to take care of my baby and that was it, you know, she was gone. Limberhand disappeared after traveling to Absorki. Her family says her body was found hogtied in the Stillwater River. Though Deanna's cause of death is listed as drowning, the family believes there's much more to the case. She was badly beaten. Friends and family rallied outside the Stillwater County Courthouse back in March on what would have been Deanna's 40th birthday, frustrated that an autopsy report has never been released. And few leads have surfaced in the months since. It's just 
almost like forgotten. MTN reached out to the Stillwater County Sheriff's Office Wednesday and received this statement saying, quote, It is still open and classified as a suspicious death primarily because there was no witnesses that saw her go into the river. There is no new information at this time. The family is frustrated not only with the lack of answers, but with what they say is a lack of communication. I wish they would, um, you know, inform us, I mean, or just give us a call and say, we're still working on this case, or just let us know, you know, what's going on. Sovereign bodies came with us to see if they could get a statement or any kind of reports or anything, but because it's still under investigation, we haven't been able to get anything. And so for now, all the family can do is hope for answers while they remember Deanna. They held this memorial Wednesday afternoon, not just for her, but for the hundreds of other missing and murdered indigenous people. The um, MMIW and MMIP, it's getting to be uh, quite larger than than it has originally been. More, more missing and more murdered. But until her murderer is found, that may be difficult to find. They just want someone to come forward with answers. In Lame Deer, Alina Howder, MTN News. Democrats are advancing a bill to the full house that would fully ban certain semi-automatic guns. It has a next to zero chance though of passing. Democrats can only lose four votes in the house if every Republican votes against the bill. Even if it gets to the Senate, it would need 60 votes to pass. Republican opponents are calling the proposal a gross attack on Second Amendment rights. The school board in Uvalde, Texas has scheduled a meeting this weekend to consider firing Police Chief Pete Arredondo. He has taken much of the public blame for the inaction by law enforcement during the May 24th school shooting at Robb Elementary. Arredondo is currently on administrative leave. Work is officially underway for the new task force. They are looking to address housing costs here in the Treasure State. At a meeting yesterday, Governor Greg Gianforte and members agreed there would be no silver bullet solutions to lower costs. The task force will focus on ideas around construction regulation, economics, and local issues. Yesterday, Native Montanans were invited to speak, letting the committee know just how much high prices are affecting their communities. I was lucky enough to grow up in Whitefish at a time when neighborhoods were mixed with folks of all different economic backgrounds. And I see the very big impact of lo losing people who are not just wealthy in our communities. The task force plans to initially meet every two weeks. They want draft recommendations by mid-September and a finished plan in mid-October. Well, it is very amazing what a little bit of art can do for a city. Q2's Haley Monaco shows us how a new initiative, it's making Billings Street safer and just better to look at. An interesting art project is happening here in the streets of Billings. You heard that right. The actual streets surrounding North Park are in the process of getting a beautiful upgrade. It's amazing what you can do with a brush, a can of paint, and a little creativity. The design starts at 6th Avenue um, with larger shapes and they get smaller and smaller as it nears the entrance to the park at 7th Avenue. And this is my interpretation of Billings as a trailhead. Three artists are working on different yet cohesive art projects this week on the streets surrounding North Park transforming ordinary asphalt into something extraordinary. Jody Leitner and Elisa Linegar are two of the artists who started their pieces on Tuesday. Leitner is working on a project covering the whole street. I love big projects, so this is the biggest project that I've done. While just down the road, Linegar is creating art on the corners. They will feature all like the native species that were once here, like bison, elk, deer, um, eagle, bears and some distant mountains and then the warm sunrises that inspire feelings of happiness, confidence, tolerance and um, all the feel good colors. Billings was one of just 26 cities nationwide that was selected to receive a $25,000 grant from Bloomberg Philanthropies for the project. A project that's not just beautiful, it's practical. The designs are to slow traffic, make it more pedestrian friendly, and create environments that people can use more often. But then these corner intersections also create friction. They slow traffic down by, by making the road feel smaller, um, even though it's technically not. All of the street paintings around North Park should be finished by August 5th to be featured in the Billings Art Walk. A short turnaround, 
but there's high hopes the paintings will last for years. This street is being renovated in three years, so um, the painting hopefully or aspects of it will last for three years. Um, but you know, I am just pleased for it to last as long as it does and we'll see, see what happens. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. All right, I love that. Thank you, Haley. And before we take a break, a Billings Billiards Master is still out shooting his competition at 97 years old. He has been competing in the Big Sky State Games for years. And as Q2's Phil Van Pelt learns, the pool player isn't giving up that sport anytime soon. At 97 years old, Bill Luscom has pretty much figured out what he likes and what he doesn't. So it's no surprise this is how he spends most of his time. That's just about all my life is pool. Luscombe has been playing pool more than five days a week for 50 years and is a staple in pool halls around Billings, playing in multiple leagues every year. Company, something to do. That commitment has helped Luscombe forge an historic career, and he's still racking up the wins. On Saturday, he and his partner took third place in the billiards competition at the Big Sky State Games. It wasn't a real big division. I think there were eight teams in it, I think, eight or nine. So it wasn't a real big division, but everybody was, it was competitive. They, Bill played well to win that medal, and so did his partner. They wouldn't have played well, they wouldn't have won it. Doug Oslison runs the event and is impressed as anyone by what Bill's managed to do, having followed his billiards career for years. There's two awards that he received that were high honors. Uh, back, I don't know the year, but back we had a doubles league. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame, which was a real high honor. And he was a young guy then. He was like in his 70s. But for Bill, it's not about the awards. This former semi-truck driver remains humble and plays for the love of the game and the camaraderie. To me, it's pretty important because I, I don't have many people to hang around with. And to say he's impressed those around him would be an understatement. It astounds me the shots he makes. And you know, when you're, when you're 97, usually your vision, vision isn't real good. And to make those shots that he makes, you have to have good vision. You have to see the ball. You have to know where to hit it exactly. And he does. A billiards player still as sharp as the day he started. Even now at the age of 97. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News.